This fighter's match was called off by the ringside doctor after it appeared that his left eye had actually popped forward out of the eye socket. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and in this video we're gonna be talking about Mark Martin's eye injury where supposedly he blew his nose causing his eye to give the appearance like it was popping forward out of the socket. Martin had sustained a number of punches to this left eye. And what we can see when we look at this image is number one, this indentation here on the outside of that left eye, suggesting that there could be some deformity of the underlying bone. Oftentimes when people have an orbital fracture, we see it more in this portion, an area called the zygomatic process. But in this case, it looks like it could have been a little bit higher up. But nonetheless, what we see is the surrounding swelling or enlargement around the eye. And it kind of gives that appearance that his eye is popping forward. Especially on this side view, we can see that increased swelling or puffiness around the top portion of his eye. Now, the first thing the doctor does when he gets in here is he puts his thumb kind of at the lower portion of the orbit because that's gonna be the area where we most often see the fracture. What he's trying to do is push on that area to see if there's any clear palpable deformity that suggests an underlying fracture. So how in the world is it possible that blowing his nose caused his eye to look this bad? Well, you may remember Donald Cerrone in the UFC had a similar thing where he developed what we call periorbital emphysema when he blew his nose after sustaining an eye injury. Looking at our biodigital anatomy tool here, we've got both orbits or eyes sitting in the eye socket with the corresponding muscles that control the movements of the eye. Typically, like I said, the area where we see fractures is going to be this lower portion, this zygomatic process that sort of sticks out underneath the eyeball. But what we worry about mainly with an orbital fracture is not only injury to the bones, but how these injuries can occur to the muscles that control the eye movements. It's easy to understand how with some swelling and trauma to the eye, you can get fluid swelling accumulation that causes increased pressure in the eye socket that actually makes the eye wanna push forward. You can have something called a retrobulbar hematoma, which is a big collection of bleeding and bruising behind the eye that gives increased pressure, causing the eye to wanna to pop forward, something we would call proptosis. Whenever you have trauma around the orbit, you can see number one, these bones lie in very close proximity to the sinuses around our head. There's air in those sinuses, and so if you have trauma to those bones, some of the air from the sinuses can escape into the location around the eyeball. Whenever you go to blow your nose, you increase the pressure within this whole system, and that increased pressure can cause that air to sort of push forward and build up behind the eye, giving it that appearance that it's coming forward. Or that air can accumulate underneath the soft tissue and skin, which gives that additional swelling. When you push on that skin, it sort of can sound like Rice Krispie treats because of that subcutaneous air. That's why you don't wanna blow your nose forcefully and increase that pressure throughout your head if you've had eye trauma where there could be some air that's escaped into the area around the orbit. You blow your nose, that air gets pushed out, increased swelling builds up, the eye can protrude forward a little bit, and then you have a much more significant injury. Thankfully, the body does a really good job of absorbing that air, and so as long as the orbital fractures are not significant enough to warrant a surgery, you don't actually have to go in there and do anything to sort of get that air out of the eye. I'll also say with the appearance of this, whenever the bones around the orbit have been fractured and they sort of depress inward, that can falsely give the appearance like the eye is protruding outward. So there's probably some component of a little bit of pressure causing the eye to protrude, but also the fact that the surrounding orbit is caved in a little bit, which kind of gives this false impression that the eye is popping out. But no, his eye was not like completely popping, hanging out of the eye socket. Even though this might not have been particularly painful for Martin and he might have wanted to continue, this was a great job by the official there and the ringside physician to recognize this injury, identify the severity of it, and appropriately in the match, based on what they were seeing with that trauma to his eye. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.